Hi everyone and welcome to this race breakdown video. This one is from our senior Jania Johnson and her mile race performance at Cypress Creek High School on March 7th. I am Kyle Giacono. I'm the head boys cross country and track coach at Wharton High School in Tampa, Florida and I have been for the last seven years. During the track season I usually work with um, all the you know 16 and 3200 meter kids, the more distance kids regardless of gender. That's why I'm bringing you this race from um, Jania. Uh, my credentials are there on the screen if you want to take a closer look. So I think it's really important to always take a look at what the specific demands are of a race before you figure out um, anything else. If you don't know what it takes to be successful in, in this case, a mile or 1,600 meters, then you don't really know anything about the race itself. So here's a little bit about the race. So um, Ingham in 2008 released a, a long longitudinal study about what it takes to win various race distances. He was looking at the 1500 meters because he was looking at professional, semi-professional um, type runners, but basically it's the same thing as, as a mile race. And he couldn't find one reason or one metric that said why one person won versus another. Um, when he just looked at running economy, basically your um, longer tempo type work or the ability to get from one place to another as economically as possible, whoever had the best running economy won 88.94%. Not quite good enough um, for this study. When he looked at just VO2 max or maximum aerobic pace, it was 91.1. So a little bit better, but still not great. But when he took a 2 metric predictor and put VO2 max over a running economy, now he ha got a predictor of whoever had the better of those two together of 95.5% accurate. So if you want to be good in the um, mile or 1500, 1600 meters, you have to be good in both of these things, both running economy and VO2 max. From USATF distance curriculum, we would find that the 15, 1600 meters is run at 110 to 112% of VO2 max. VO2 max is typically looked at as your two mile pace, so obviously the mile is going to be faster, so you have to kind of look at that when you're training um, somebody that it's going to be at a much faster pace, which makes sense because it is shorter. And then from this study, which is um, brought, to, brought to you guys by the, um, it was the IAAF that um, sort of published this um, study in, in broad context, but it was first done by Dr. Matter and Hartman in 2018. Um, they found that the 1500 meters in terms of the energy that went into it from the different energy systems, that 8% came from the ATP that was just sitting in their energy, their muscles first off, and then the phosphocretin or cretin phosphate or the alactic system supplied 8% of the energy. That's like your starts and your finishing kick. The anaerobic glycolytic or longer speed system that causes acid to build up eventually in your muscles, 20% came from that system, a pretty good chunk. But then the remaining 72% of it came from the aerobic system, which again kind of shows that you can't speed your way through a, a mile. Still, almost three-fourths of the energy is coming from the aerobic system. But 28% is coming from the two anaerobic systems because obviously you still need to train those because you don't want to throw those away. So you got to balance those two things. So that is the mile itself. So looking a little bit at um, Jania entering this race, Jania, sometimes we call her Gigi if you um, hear it on the video, um, she was the number three seed entering this race based on previous PRs. Her previous PR from the year before was 531.21, but uh, Gigi had run 539 in a time trial a few weeks before. Um, actually, the uh, video from that is in the description down below if you want to take a look. This was her first mile race of the season, and um, looking thanks to the uh, the outbreak that uh, we're all dealing with here in this country, it may be the only mile that she runs this season. Um, but you could say that she's probably, you know, poised at this point because that uh, that time trial we did was at the very beginning of February, like February seventh, um, might have been the sixth, I can't remember exactly. And this race was on March seventh, so a, a month's worth of improvement. We were expecting at this point um, to be better than her previous PR. So this was her first race of the day. We also had her run the 4x4 later on in the day. Um, Jania shows promise in both pure distance and mid-distance. Um, I think when first starting working with her, it, it, I thought that she was a pure distance kid, but she has a lot of giddy up too when, when sort of she's warmed up, I would say correctly. When she's got a lot on her, she can really post a really good 400, a really good 800, and shorter things. So um, kind of hard to classify her at this point. As I mentioned, this, mar this uh, race was March 7th, the fourth week of our regular season. We we're toward the end of specific prep, so that's why we were also doing a 4x4. Four four. I always look at races as being an extension of training at this point in the season, the first chunk still. So we're really looking at adding in that anaerobic work. So the shorter uh, mile um, and the 4x4 four four was kind of what was on tap for that day. 
But obviously, we're still working on aerobic development. So this is the idea of 72% of this race came from the aerobic side. We're still working on that. But we have to make sure that the 28% that comes from the anaerobic system is going to be peaked at the end of the season. So that's why we were doing that with her this day. The goal for this mile was to go under 530. Well, not only did we want to do that because it would have basically given her a PR, but she had some scholarship implications sort of on the line. Um, she had already signed with or committed to, um, you can't sign until sometime in April at this point, but she would already committed to Florida Southern, really solid distance program in this area, um, but she was going to have an escalator if she went under 530, so that was why we were shooting for that number. And then it was going to set up us trying to go under 520, which... If we had had a normal season, under 520 is how you make the elite race at FSU Relays, one of the biggest races in Florida. So that's why we were trying to set her up for that. So to even split under 530, just I always tell them, you know, what an even split was. Obviously, in a mile, you're not going to even split it. Um, but that would be 82 seconds per 400. That would go 528. So her other PRs to this point before we get to the video itself is her 800 PR is 229.76 from the year before. She did not run an open 800 to this point. Her 3200 meter PR is 1212.97, which was from the week before at our home invitational. Her 400 PR is 64.93, and that was from a test um, during a, a dual meet hand-timed um, meet that we did earlier this season. So not electronically timed, so maybe it was, you know, 65, something like that. And her 5K PR is 26.59 20, from her senior season. So let's take a look at the video itself. So this is me at the 200. Um, so they're here on their first lap. As we come through here, very, very fast first pace. The young lady who up front is from Sun Lake is a low five kid. Gigi is right here. So she did a good job of sort of letting this people kind of go out um, early trying to hold back a little bit here on this first lap because it went out very quickly. We have another runner in this race from Morton, two other runners in this race, race from Morton. The other young lady I work with right here, um, Alex Fry, and then Jesse Perez, who's more of middle distance that works um, with another group, are also in this race. So you'll see me kind of looking at this whole group as we go through. So this first lap goes out. I mean, as you can see, as the girl from Sun Lake is way, way out in front. She's a very, very fast runner, the number one seed here. And Sun Lake is a team that is known for going out really fast. So that was one of the cues I told them going in was she's going to take it out fast um, to the, the girls in this race. Try to be patient early. Um, stop it here for one second. You can't, um, you can't, run a great PR in the mile from the first lap, but you can screw it up to where you're just dead at the end. It's not just like, you know, if you see me do um, 3,200 meter race breakdowns in the past, where I really want to even split it for the first six laps and then go. The first lap's going to be a little bit harder, but you still want that last lap to be the fastest. So that's kind of what we were preaching going into this race if we were going to try and go under 530 here. So as Gigi does come through this first lap, if I remember correctly, in about 78 seconds, which would be a really, really fast PR. And at this point, I'm always, I'm calling out splits. Um, for the most part, they do say that they can hear me, and obviously on the first lap, you can see um, the clock. But she knows that she's going out really, really quickly. Now, the second lap slows down considerably to almost six-minute pace. Gigi's still being very patient here. She's sitting in, what, first place, two, three, four, five, sixth place here. As we come through the 600 meter mark, Alex has caught up with her, gone, um, those two work really, really well together. Very, very relaxed, very composed. I really tell them to focus on their breathing here. Jesse is now coming also up to the 200 meter mark. But this got a little bit too relaxed, which can happen in that mile because that first lap is a little bit quick. But this lap comes through and I believe it's 88 seconds, which slips almost into six minute pace. So... As we're coming through here, and I'm telling them, hey, it's like 44 seconds, 43 seconds at the 200. We have to pick this thing up. Um, and you can even see me with my hands. They're kind of saying we got to ratchet things up a little bit. It kind of just got a little bit too relaxed here. Um, not the worst thing in the world early on to be a little bit more relaxed that she's sitting now, and I believe it's third, fourth, fifth place because the girl from Sun Lake has, I think, already crossed the halfway point. But we're coming through here, and we are not on pace for under 5.30. Um, and that's going to be kind of what I'm telling her as we're coming through the rest of it. If you notice, I actually move up almost to the 300-meter mark here to talk to her about that in this race. This girl's the number two seed, if I remember correctly. I don't remember her name, but she's the number two seed. It's going to come down to them a little bit later on. Gigi does start to pick things up. I think because she went out too fast, not, not too fast, but the first lap was under pace. 
she really kind of went almost too far in the other direction and talked to her about it a little bit under afterwards. That was kind of what her thought thinking was. She was trying to find that rhythm. It's kind of hard to do that once you've already gone out a little bit quickly, um, but she does a great job here of pulling it back together, having a really solid third lap, and man, I just love the way she closes on this last lap. She sets herself up perfectly. She's moved herself from that fifth, sixth place position up to about third place to really set up a really nice showdown here. The girl from Sun Lake is gone at this point, but we kind of expected that um, to set up a really nice showdown here for second place in this race. And really, it's it's impressive where this comes down to as you see this last lap get started. Right here, both girls know it's go time. And it's really, look at this, they are just right next to each other. Going, 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 stride for stride, step for step. Go back and give Alex some encouragement here um, before we see the end of Gigi's race. And at this point, she is on pace to go under 530 if she holds this intensity. She's going with this girl. She unfortunately was on the outside, but she passes about halfway through this last turn. And you saw how they were neck and neck. When Gigi goes, she goes on this lap. And look at the separation as she comes back around. And you can see it is not even a race anymore for second place. Gigi has just totally pulled away from this girl ahead by about 10 meters, 15 meters at this point. And Gigi is still turning over in a very, very good way. Sorry, it's a little bit shaky there. Still turning over at a great, great clip. Alex coming through. She sets a PR in this race, too. I believe it was 540. So that is how the race was and how we broke things down. So let's just see how the actual race um, plays out in terms of the metrics here. So... Get everything up on the screen. Our goal was to go under 530, which was 82 seconds per 400 again, which would be 528. A uh, really quick first lap, but had to because of the way this race went out. I mean, she was in sixth place, and it was still a little bit too quick, and then it was a too conservative second lap. Um, really working with Gigi on race execution, and she really got it here on the second half of this. So she realized she was a bit off pace starting that uh, second half of the race, and went out absolutely perfectly on that last lap, as you saw that turnover. Those mechanics really held firm, held true all the way through. And her final time was 527.65, second place and a new PR. Her lap breakdown, her first lap was 79 seconds. Her second lap was 88, so her first 800 was in 248, an 84-second um, split which would be on pace for 536, which would not be what we wanted. A faster second half played out, an 83-second third lap, and a 75-5 flat last lap. Just an absolutely fantastic final kick. Second 800 was in 238, which is 79 seconds per 400. That second half is 516 pace. So it came together at a really nice PR pace of 527.65 for, for Gigi. Went under 530. Um... Importantly, that was our goal for the day. Really made good improvement. Had a PR of, you know, about, what was that, 12 seconds, 11 seconds, something like that from her time the year before. And most importantly, we got a little uh, scholarship uh, implications that were going on there, too. So just a fantastic day for for Gigi here in our race at Cypress Creek High School. So if you like this video, please think about liking or subscribing. If you found it helpful, maybe think about sharing it around. Um, I like doing race breakdowns. I think there's a lot to say from looking back at how somebody executes things, both what you see in the video, but also sort of this, you know, breakdown of how things play out. Again, um, just looking at, I mean, every single lap counts evenly, and you got to kind of see where this all plays out as you go into it. Um, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Please ask them in the, the comments down below. Um, and until next time, this has been Coachy TV.